Hi, Jason. I'm building an authenticated Cloud Run service, and I want to call it from my C Sharp code. Hey, I've done that a bunch of times. Uh, I'd love to show you some code around it. Hi, Jason. Welcome to the show. What's your job here at Google? I'm a customer engineer. I help customers build applications in Google Cloud, and I have a long background in .NET development. Sounds great. You probably get a lot of questions from customers about authentication in Cloud Run, right? I do. It generally comes in one of three flavors. Users trying to authenticate end user authentication against Cloud Run, uh, calling Google APIs, so getting your Cloud Run service to authenticate against the underlying Google services. Or the third scenario I see a lot is when you've got code like yours trying to invoke an authenticated Cloud Run service. We see this a lot in service to service communications between multiple services in Cloud Run. Right, you're exactly right. I need C Sharp code for that last use case, like you said. Yeah, perfect. I can definitely help you with this. <laughs> All right, so I deployed a simple Hello World Cloud Run service here and I set it to allow unauthenticated invocations. All right, let's look at your Cloud Run project in GCP. I can see you've got a Hello World project, and I can hit that endpoint, and I get back a response, Pong. So let me copy your service URL, and I have got a simple boilerplate c -sharp application, and we'll just paste your URL in here. This is running in VS Code on my Chromebook, and this code should just access that service. Let's build this locally. And it just calls the ping endpoint, and it prints out the uh, Pong <laughs> with a timestamp. Very good. Now, what if we turn on authentication? Sure, let's turn that on. It will take a minute for this to take effect here in the GCP console. All right, let me refresh my browser. And it doesn't work for my machine. I get a 403, but that's actually what we wanted. We're not allowing any unauthenticated requests to your endpoint. Ah. And how would you update that C sharp code you showed me so it makes an authenticated request instead? Yeah, absolutely. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a reference to a package called google.cloud.iam.credentials.v1. Um, this is where the magic happens in the SDK. Um, and then I'm going to add a line of code here that grabs a token. And so we'll just stub that out, get token async with the service URL. And this is going to get invoked every time my service starts up. But every time somebody hits that root endpoint, so you can see I have this app.map.get, um, here I am going to go out and get an access token and set that to the authorization header on my request. So that way, every time I invoke the ping endpoint, I am going to have a fresh access token to call Cloud Run with. Got it. Uh, what does that get access token async method do? Well, that's a great question. And uh, part of the reason why this is a little bit confusing, and I'm glad we're explaining this here, is that this get access token is actually getting an ID token, uh, and that's what's necessary for us to pass to Cloud Run in order to authenticate. The nice thing about using uh, this every time we uh, get a request is that it's going to check to make sure that that token has been refreshed. These tokens are short-lived, and so if, for example, my service is running for more than an hour, it will automatically go out and refresh that token. So we get the most recent uh, ID token that gets passed to Cloud Run. Oh, I like that auto refresh. 
right. Uh, now, all I need to do is implement that get token async method. And the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to get the application default credentials using the static class Google credential. And then I'm going to get the token that we're looking for here by calling get OIDC token async. And I'm going to pass it a target audience so that I use these options. And one of those is the service URL. That way we're scoping the token just to your service. So this token couldn't be used for any other service or any other um, you know, Google service. It's scoped specifically to your Cloud Run service. And the last thing I'll do is I'm just going to return that token. Very nice. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. That's all the code that needs to be added. Uh, let me run that again. And I will refresh and voila, there it is. Uh, success. We get the response pong back and I've given you a little timestamp to prove that I'm actually doing it. Yeah, oh, very nice. Now this code runs on your Chromebook. Uh, what would need to change to run it in the cloud? Yeah, I've got a little script here that uh, will actually use Cloud Build to deploy it to Cloud Run. Let me uh, just invoke that script. And it will take about a minute to deploy this. Looks like the deployment succeeded. Yeah, so let me open that Cloud Run Services URL in my browser. So at my root endpoint here. And it succeeded. Uh, my code was deployed to Cloud Run. I haven't made any changes whatsoever. It's just running out there in Cloud Run. Now, your code didn't mention any passwords or count keys or anything like that. Uh, how come it all worked? Yeah, that's a great question. So for local development, Google recommends that developers use uh, impersonation for their service accounts. So the Cloud Run service is running as a service account. I am impersonating that service account here locally on my machine, and it's privileged to, uh, with the Cloud Run invoker role in order to make that invocation. And then we don't have to download any service account keys? That's right. So downloading a service account key is risky. It could fall into the wrong hands. Um, of course, you can always revoke those, but you don't want these to um, get you know, pushed into a Git repo, et cetera. Uh, so that's why Google recommends using the impersonation instead. To do that, uh, what I do is I am going to do gcloud auth login with this special argument called impersonate SA. And I'm passing it in the SA account that my Cloud Run service is running as. And that gives you a URL? Yeah. And so I am just going to plug that URL into my browser here, and I will log in. It shows that my credentials were saved to this JSON file. And so the way that the .NET SDK and again, many of the other SDKs work is the Google application default credentials works by reading an environment variable. And in this case, it's the Google application credentials environment variable. So I'm going to set the value of that variable, that environment variable to that JSON file that um, was just returned. I see. So now the C sharp code you showed me earlier can call the authenticated Cloud Run service using that service account you mentioned uh, from your laptop. Now, how about uh, when your code runs in the cloud? Would you need to do some of these steps up there? Yeah, that's the beauty of using the application default credentials is that I don't have to do any more steps. So by deploying with that, it's just going to run as that service account that's registered with Cloud Run. And I don't have to make any code changes. I don't have to deploy any configuration. I don't have to worry about a secret being stored anywhere. It just works. Uh, and so let me show you in Cloud Run where I have chosen which service account my code will run as. And there you can see it. Ah, so you didn't have to change the authentication code when you move the code from your Chromebook to Cloud Run. Uh, what if you wanted to run that code on another product in Google Cloud, uh, like Cloud Functions or Compute Engine or Virtual Machine? Yeah, the same code is going to work regardless of the platform. So if I go to Google Compute Engine and deploy this in a VM, for example, it's going to have the ability to run as a particular service account as well. Same thing goes for Google Kubernetes Engine or Cloud Functions. 
all of these will be able to use the Google application default credentials just as is. No, no changes are necessary. Excellent. Uh, what if I want to run my C-sharp code outside of Google Cloud, uh, like another cloud provider? Yeah, absolutely. So for that, you have one of two options. One is we can export that service account key that we were talking about before, and we could store that as a secret with whatever the cloud provider secret uh, manager is, and then load that at runtime. That has some drawbacks, though. Obviously, exposing that service account key could be a vulnerability. It's something that we would you know, probably not pass our security reviews in some enterprises that I've worked with. And so the, the better option for many of these enterprise customers I've worked with is to use the Workload Identity Federation. How would I do that? Yeah, well, that's a great question. And it's probably worth a whole video in of itself to set up. All right, that sounds good, Jason. Thanks for sharing this with us. Thanks for having me, Martin. And thank you, everyone, for watching. If you have questions for Jason or me, please enter them in the comments below. Also, let me know if there are any other serverless topics you'd like to see in future episodes. I read every single comment. Until next time.